Welcome to chapter 4 of the book of 1 John. John now continues and explains uh, the things of the Spirit that he has proclaimed as more important than anything else, basically. He begins agapati. Now, you'll find three words that are used throughout this chapter, and they're agape, beloved, meno, to remain or abide, and phobos, fear. It seems to be the theme of this chapter, and he begins it with that word agapiti, beloved. Believe not every penevmati, but distinguish the spirits if they are from out of God. Well, I went into the lexicon of the Bible and I started going through and I was thinking about listing all the different types of spirits that are mentioned starting in the Old Testament. And I got to about seven or eight and I stopped and I was only in Judges. So if somebody wanted to go through the whole Bible and find out Panevma, all the spirits and write and list and send it in, it would be uh, greatly appreciated because this word appears so many times. Uh, the, the, the ones that I ran into early on in Genesis to Judges was the spirit of man, which is um, the breath of man that has been poured into man by God. I think that's best explanation. And then there's the spirit of life, and it could be in man or animals, I suppose, plants. Then there was the negative spirits of a jealousy, a sorrowful spirit, and a distressing spirit. And But then there was the positive spirit of wisdom. All of these were right at the very beginning. So believe not every spirit. And like I think I mentioned the last one, I had the man from India who was searching for spiritual things, and I told him, well, that's wonderful, but depends on which spirit you're looking for, because there's so many. And then he continues, for poli, poly, many, uh, pseudo profite, have gone forth into the cosmone. Pseudo or pseudo is false, and profite is a prophet, it's a transliteration, have gone forth into the world. Well, I was thinking about also going and finding the false prophecies that have been given, but in, uh, in different uh, man-made religions, and I decided not to really do that. You can go on the internet and look under false prophets, false prophecies, and just tremendous amount of things that have been written by a lot of people over a period of time, and decide for yourselves. But the false prophets prophesying uh, something that's going to happen is one false prophet is that uh, a certain, certain period of time, a certain year, something is going to happen. Or <clears throat> uh, giving prophecies of things, attitudes that are going to take place uh, soon. Uh, the pastor of the church I went to back in the 80s, uh, there was a man who prophesied that the world was coming to an end in, a, I don't remember, it was, must have been in 1980 something, and that all these people started going, and he said that the Lord's coming back and he's going to come in someplace in Kansas on the side of a road in a farm and pick everybody up. So a lot of people went there and, and um, listened to this man and went there, and the pastor of the church says, well, well, we're going to find out. I'm, who's the, I prophesy that nothing is going to happen on that day. Nobody's going to be taken uh, from that spot. And so we're going to see on that day who the false prophet is, that person and gave his name, and I don't, I don't remember who he is, or me. Uh, so, of course, the world didn't come to an end, and that man was a false prophet. Pretty clever. By this... Uh, Genoskete, you know the Panevma, the Spirit of God. By this, every Panevma which acknowledges Jesus Christ having come in flesh is from out of God. Jesus Christ coming uh, in the flesh. Uh, 
down in verse 7, it talks about uh, Jesus. Uh, let's I'll go down the 5, 7. I should have put a link there, but I didn't. And um, for there are the ones bearing witness in the heaven, the Father and the Word and the Holy Spirit. And the three are in one. And three are the ones witnessing upon the earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and the three are in one. Now, th there's controversy on these verses and where, what manuscripts had them, but we're not going to go into that here. I'm just going to show you that where it says the Father, the Word, which is Jesus, the Logos, and the Holy Spirit, the three are in one. So it's more than just saying Jesus has come into the flesh as far as I see it. It's uh, God has come into the flesh. Jesus is from God because it says that uh, in, a, in another place here. Uh, I'll get back to the place where I was at. Uh, any, every spirit which does not acknowledge Jesus Christ uh, having come in flesh is not from out of God. And in verse 15, later on here, uh, it talks about the Son of God, more than just God, but the uh, Son of God, that he's the Son of God. And in Daniel 3, 24, Nebuchadnezzar, when he looked into the fiery furnace, he said, I thought we threw four men in there, and I, uh, three men in there, and behold, I see four. The fourth looks like the Son of God. So it was mentioned. You, from out of God, are sons, and have overcome uh, them. That is, you have uh, overcome those false prophets and the things that aren't of God. For greater is the one in you, God, than the one in the cosmo. They are from out of the cosmo, cosmo. Because of this, they speak from out of the cosmo. And the cosmo hears them. Uh, so, basically... We, a person can stand up in the corner or someplace and start talking about Jesus and people will want him to shut up and uh, make fun of him and do all kinds of things. They can almost may stand up and talk about anything else, politics or, uh, well, sometimes people do get upset about that too, but our, our sports and so forth, uh, the things of the world, people accept way more than the things of Jesus. There was a man who was a pastor, and he was on an elevator, he said, and he said that all of these people on the elevator were cursing Jesus and saying, you know, Jesus this and Jesus that. Or, and so he wanted to get off because he couldn't stand it. The door opened, but the Lord held him there. And so he, the door closed, and he's, they were kept on, and he said, you know, Jesus is the person that died for me, and he told them all about Jesus. And as soon as the door opened, the next time, man, they ran off the uh, uh, elevator, couldn't wait to get away. So uh, speaking, uh, the world hears the others and the people of God hear his word. We are from out of God. The one knowing God hears us. The one who is not from out of God does not hear us. Hearken is another word more than hearing. I mean, that's a figure that anybody would hear us if I was talking, but hearkening to it is another thing. I have a man that I talked to for a long time here for the last year, and he just uh, doesn't hearken. He doesn't, it doesn't go in, doesn't make, he just argues against it constantly. And uh, so he, basically he's not of God. From this we know the spirit of the truth and the spirit of of the delusion. So here again is that word I was telling you, the three, the, uh, the spirit and uh, the agape and meno. I don't think I said spirit. I should have. Pnevma. Four of them. Agape, meno, phobos, and pnevma. Uh, delusion. Uh, what is the spirit of delusion? The Old Testament, Jeremiah 23, 17, says, they say to the ones thrusting away the word of the Lord, Peace will be to you, and to all the ones going by their wants, and to all going in a delusion of his heart, saying, Evils shall not come upon you. 
So the de delusion there is someone saying that something that's in the Bible isn't going to happen. The, when you get to the book of uh, Revelations, boy, nobody wants to believe the things that it has to say. Beloved agapiti, agapomen, we should love alilus, one another, for the agapi is from out of God, theu. And everyone agapon is engendered or born again, born from above, from out of ek theu. And Gnoski knows ton theon. The one uh, not loving does not know theon, for theos is agape. God is love. God is light. God has these attributes that um, we... Uh, we see, and the one not loving does not know God, for the God is love. I had a man, I think I mentioned before, that I was working at a fish plant, and somebody told him I was working on a translation of the Bible, and he comes over, and right away he starts saying, what do you think about the um, Sabbath? Is the Sabbath this? And, and arguing, arguing, and arguing, and just being as mean as could possibly be. And finally I looked at him, and I said, you know what? You've talked to me for 15 minutes now in arguing on the uh, all this about the Sabbath, but you haven't shown any love to me at all. What's it all What's it all worth to you? What's it all about? You can sit there and argue about something like the Sabbath, but you don't have the love in you for me? I mean, that's that just proves that the person that does that, love is not in him. He's argumentative, and it's really sad. In this was made manifest the love of God in us, that his son, the monogony, God sent into the cosmos that we should live through him. Uh, the monogony, the only born of God. He was the firstborn of Mary, prototokon. The firstborn of Mary means she had other children, which she gives their names as boys and girls, sister, brothers and sisters. And But the monogony is only, Jesus is the only born of God into the world, that we should live through him. And that's his, uh, how, living through Christ is uh, obeying the things that he has to say, getting hope in the things that he has to say, healings through the things that he has to say, admonitions through the things he has to say, instructions through the things he said, all the things that are necessary to live a righteous or a good life, we should get through him and not through anything else. And then he continues, in this is the agape. Not that we agape some men, we love ton theon, but that he agape, agape son us and sent his son as an atonement for our sins. And that is an atonement is uh, an animal in the Old Testament that is to be slain. And that animal is the atonement. It's something that is not... It's not a, a, what would you call it? It's not like a, a um, propitiation, which is a meaning for something. An atonement is an actual thing. And uh, the atonement is only mentioned like eight times in the Bible, this word. A couple of them right here. Agapiti, beloved, if thus, O Theos, Agapis and Imas, loves thus, also we ought agapan alilus, alilus agapan, to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. Well, that's true uh, in his fullness. The fullness of God, uh, no one could see him because our eyes would probably disintegrate. We would disintegrate because God is... Uh, I don't... People couldn't stand it. When God showed himself to... What was it, Abraham or Moses? Put him in the rock, Moses. And his shadow went by, and that was enough. Um, people can't see God and live, it says. But when God takes a form that can be seen, which he has, then we can see that. And that's happened a few places in the Bible. Uh, Theophanies, it's called. Christophanes, if it's Christ, Theophanes, God. 
In Genesis 18.33, And the Lord went forth as he ceased speaking to Abraham. And this was when Abraham whittled him down. If you 100 people righteous in Sodom, would you destroy it? No. 50, no. 10, no. 9, 8, 7, got him down. 1, no. And then in Genesis 32.28, Why is this you ask in my name? Which is wonderful. And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of that place, Sight of God, for I saw God face to face. He was able to see the face of God. And then in Judges 6.22, it says, And Gideon knew that it, it is angel of the Lord, uh, Yahweh. And Gideon said, Alas, my Lord, uh, O Lord, O Yahweh, uh, for I beheld the angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said to him, Peace to you, do not fear, in no way you shall not die. And then in Judges 13, 22, uh, Manoah and his wife, parents of Samson, said, To death we shall die, for we have looked at God. And then Daniel 3, 24, I mentioned before, Was it not three men we threw into the midst of the fire being shackled? Said Nebuchadnezzar. And they said to the king, Well, truly, O Lord, uh, truly, O king, and the king said, well, here I see four men being loosed and walking in the midst of the fire, and there's no corruption to them. And the vision of the fourth is likened to son of God. So a non-Jew has seen God. By this we know that in him we abide. And there's the abide, the other word. And he in us, that from out of his pneumatos, he has given to us, born from above, the Spirit of God that comes into us that gives life to our spirit, our godly spirit. Otherwise, we're just walking around uh, as we're alive and we have spirit, the spirit of man, but we don't have spirit of God. And th that is something that we need, spirit of God in so many ways. And we have seen and bear witness that the patir, paternal as a derivative, has sent the Son as deliverer of the cosmu. Uh, God, the Father, has sent the Son, and Jesus says the Father and I are one. So it's all the Godhead. Uh, and Jesus is the deliverer, salvation, the Savior would be the King James. Whoever should acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, there and now he, he's making it even uh, more uh, emphatic, uh, God abides in him and he in God. Whoever acknowledges Jesus is the Son of God, that is God, basically. And we have known and have believed the love which God has for us. There should be a dash here. I'm going to change it in the next one. God is love. And the one abiding in the agape abides many in God. So abiding in uh, love, abiding in God. You have to have love. And this is the number one thing. And uh, You can go to 1 Corinthians 13 and go all about, what, about how wonderful love is. Uh, and God, uh, and the one abiding in the love abides in God and God in him. So that's wonderful. God is abiding in the people that love. In this, the love the agape has been perfected with us that we should have confidence in the day of the judgment. So we have love and we should have confidence because if we have love and we go to being with the Lord, Jesus is going to love us. We love him. We're one with him. He's in us. And we know that what he is, we know that we're guilty, uh, <laughs> guilty as hell. And that's where a person is going. But with the love of Christ, then uh, the atonement, atoning death, sacrifice, we will be uh, the propitiation, the giving God what he wants to sac satisfy the judgment uh, that of, of being guilty and the sentence of death will be taken care of as we walk behind Jesus into the New Jerusalem. For as that one Jesus is, also we are in this world. 
we are, so as Christ is holy, so are we holy in this world. That's what it means. Well, fear is not in uh, love. But perfect love casts fear outside. When you have love, you know God is in control. And you just have to realize that. And so the fear, the worst thing that could happen is you could die. And then you'll be with the Lord right away. Now, fearing certain things, I mean, are natural. I mean, if I was walking out uh, out in the street and a car screeches, I would be fearful for sure. Uh, that's um, That has nothing to do with love or no love. That's just our reaction of that type of a, of a fear, and it's not what it's talking about here. But the fear of, of we're going to be condemned or uh, something bad is going to happen as far as spiritually, I think it's more in tune with this. But perfect love casts fear outside. Wow. For fear holds punishment, and the one fearing has not been made perfect in love. So punishment is going to be the outer darkness. For we agapomen, we love him, for he first Agapison loved us. There's the verbs in the verbal form of agape. If anyone, uh, we love him for he first loved us. Somehow, God loves me. I <laughs> loves you. I don't know why. I have a wonderful mother. That's a blessing to me. And God blessed her maybe and said, well, I will love your son. I don't know how it, God's love uh, works. Uh, the, he first loved us, so it wasn't something I did, but yet he knows everything about us, so if he knows what the end is going to be, then I suppose you could uh, love somebody if you know where the end is leading, then probably that is close to what the, what it is. If anyone should say that agapo ton theon, I love God, and should detest his adelphon, his brother, psevsti sestin, a pseudo, he's a liar. For the not for the one not agapon, his adelphon, whom he has seen, well, how is he able uh, to love God to whom he has not seen? Well, this is what he's bringing up. If you don't uh, love your brother and the brother in the Lord, I think that's what he's talking about, not your physical brother and not neighbors. Uh, if you don't love the brothers, then how... Do you love God, whom you haven't even seen? And this commandment we have from him, that the one agapon theon, ton theon, agapa, ke ton adelphon of two, that the one loving God should love also his brother. So when we are faced with the brother, and it's a hard thing to deal with, the love should somehow come forth. And how does that happen? Well, I just have to say a quick prayer. And once you do that, you're putting yourself in the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will take over and ask for guidance. And the Holy Spirit will give you the guidance of dealing with a brother that may uh, be hard to love. Well, it's easy to love a brother that loves you. And so uh, that would just be pretty much natural. But having the heart of love is what we are to have, uh, open to love of a of a brother. Now, that doesn't mean if a brother's doing something as bad that he shouldn't be admonished. That's a whole nother thing. But our caring for the, the brother uh, is uh, very important. Now, when is a person a brother or not? How do we determine a person's a brother or not? Is it somebody that's only in the church that proclaims he's a, a Christian? Is that uh, a brother well, I would say so. Uh, and me, people that write me and call me on the telephone and email me about <clears throat> things about the Lord, are they brothers? Yeah, I, I, I would say they are. What about somebody that comes up to you and you meet, let's say at a coffee shop, and the person is open to hear what the things that you have to say, but yet argues about everything? Uh, but comes back more than once. 
Is that person a brother? Well, in a way, at the very beginning, he could be a spiritual brother if the Lord is um, drawing him. And we don't know if the Lord is or not. So I almost, I would, I would take it to say, well, that, like that person is a brother and I love him. But now if that person blasphemes and says things that blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, and then no, that's it. That's the break. And that person is not a brother. He's somebody that's against God. God, loving, love God. So we will get into the next step, the highest step that John shows to us in chapter 5. And I hope you'll join us. And God bless.